Well, the latest inflation print showed U.S. consumer price gains cooled in March, while core inflation still remains far above the Fed's target. Here with more on the latest reaction to the recent inflation data is Ben Amons, New Edge Wealth Senior Portfolio Manager. Good to see you, Ben. So trying to make sense of this all, obviously we're getting a lot of Fed speak and then this C- and then this CPI print. What are your takeaways from this? Hi, Rochelle. Um, well, as as Goolsby puts out in his speech, and I think that's a that's a significant speech. Um, you know that yes, inflation fight cannot really end yet, but they have to really bring into the their focus the um, the stress that's built up in the banking system because as they raise rates, ultimately this did lead to a a fallout in the banking system, and as that then now starts to spill over to the real economy, eventually it will affect inflation too. So this data we just got this morning shows still stickiness, as we say. There's you know shelter inflation and there's other components that are very elevated, but there's energy on the other hand that's declining. At the same time, we're dealing with a credit problem potentially. And that's, I think, what the focus will be for the Fed today. What we'll get out of these minutes is that this will become a, a factor going forward from here in the decision making. So I think the way the market reacted was to take some of the expectations of June and May back for a rate hike and be a bit more cautious here. So the Fed may be going towards one more rate hike and then end the cycle. And so what are your expectations here then? Do you think investors are going to finally catch on to that? Because obviously they seem to have been going in a different direction, sort of fighting the Fed up until this point. Yeah, that divergence between the, the Fed and the markets um, is on the one hand really about the markets looking much more further ahead in the future of Fed, you're raising rates quick and fast and it does damage to the economy. So it will result in a recession and therefore we discount lower rates. Whereas the Fed is more current data and looks at data point by data point right in front of the meeting as that where it is down to the wire and then make its decision last minute to say, okay, we're going to raise rates or we're not. And so this is why we're having a gap between the markets and the Fed. And I think that gap will probably persist for a while because this Fed, as you just heard from your colleague, you know, like say Barkin, again, coming with a very different opinion about the credit crunch that Goolsby sees as a bigger risk, shows that the vibe within the Fed probably leads them to consensus to stay the course on, we have to bring inflation really down to be sure. So I think that gap between the Fed and the markets will persist. And Ben, to that point, earlier this week, Yahoo Finance had the chance to speak with New York Fed President John Williams, and we were able to get his thoughts on the Fed's restrictive policy. Take a listen. I would say we're, we're somewhat restrictive. I mean, I, uh, I'm, I would get out my thesaurus maybe and come up with a more creative word, but I think somewhat restrictive. My view of kind of the longer run neutral you know, real interest rates, but half a percentage point. So I think we're, we're somewhat above that. So the real question to me is, we've gotten to restrictive. What's it going to take to be sufficiently restrictive? Do we need to do uh, somewhat more to get there? And obviously, be driven by kind of the data and the outlook. Now, Williams mentions the neutral interest rate. I wanted you to first break down what this means and why this rate is important for the Fed. Yeah, the neutral rate of interest is about an interest rate where the economy is not growing really fast or really slow, where things are not too hot or too cold. It's just about right. And clearly we're not in that economy just yet, right? We're actually an economy with too high inflation and and too low employment. And so what, what he's pointing at is that if you take the Fed funds rate and you accounted for inflation, it is just above what he thinks is neutral, but it may go have to go a bit higher from here in order to get this better balance between employment and inflation. So neutral to the Fed is really about, we want to get back to an economy where things are much more in balance. They're getting there, but as you can tell from the inflation data, we still have a lot of sticky parts in there, which indicates they have to do more work, which as William said, they probably have to bring up the rate a bit more into restrictive territory and then getting an economy that's better balanced. And that should reflect ultimately a neutral rate, which to the Fed's estimates is something like two and a half percent. So eventually the Fed will go back to that rate. Just at this moment, they have to be more restrictive and have a funds rate far above that two and a half percent. So then how are we figuring out then how low or high that neutral rate is supposed to be? Big uh, academic debate, um, uh, Rochelle. Like, so you, I'm here in Washington myself, and and uh, you know at the IMF there's a big paper out now that 
they think these neutral rates are very uh, all over the place, if you will. But if anything, they probably have declined again because as much as we did to help the economy get over COVID and did a lot of stimulus, it's all been very temporarily. So the potential growth rate of the economy hasn't changed much. If anything, maybe has gone down because there's not been enough investment. People have been sidelined. Productivity has declined. And so the IMF is a very interesting point there saying if you have a lower neutral rate and you're going to continue to raise rates, then you will end up eventually with having to go back all the way to zero because you've done too much damage to the economy. So I think this neutral rate is somewhat variable. I think, though, from, from my own analysis, that the neutral rate probably is somewhere where the Fed thinks it is, 25 to 3%. And that's also where financial markets are discounting. So that means the Fed can still raise rates somewhat, but we're probably ending the tightening cycle sometime in the next quarter. Certainly a delicate balancing act when you factor that in as well. Yeah. Ben Amons, New Age Wealth Senior Portfolio Manager, always great to have you. Thank you for your time. Thank you.